Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, this is actually in a much higher pitch, but my voice was just too cold <laughs> to, <laughs> to even grasp it. It was a, a little piece, a little excerpt from the opera Katibu Dishong, Slave and Master. I've been working on this opera already for about six years. Six years ago, I read a book and this book was called Slav and Meister, Slave and Master, from Karel de Hasset. And I think there was, for me, life before the book and life after the book. We are now in life after the book, obviously. And this book changed my life. Why? Because it's, it's a book about our island and about the slave revolt. And we would all think, well, we all know everything about that. We're all experts here on the slave revolt. We know everything. But this book is something different. Because it touched me. Because I realized that it was not a black and white story. It was a story about people. About emotions. About the society that you live in. And what it does to you when you are living in a society that you don't have a choice. And when people look at you, what they think you are. I'm a very successful opera singer. Yes, I can say so, I am. <laughs> and <laughs> but, but, I must say, I must say, there is one element that I am very, 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 very aware of. And that's the surprise element. Because when I come up in auditions, or I come up and then I have to sing in front of people, and I come up and they say, what can she do? Can she sing? I don't know. And then there's this surprise emblem because I go like, ah, I sing. And then they go, oh, wow. Especially somehow in Holland. Because there, there is this type of mentality that they want to put you in the box and tell, well, you are from Curacao and you are a girl, then you must be studying something or st not studying at all. <laughs> right? But when I say, well, I'm an opera singer, they go, yeah, really? <laughs> sure, sure you are, sure you are. But then I sing and then they are convinced that I am. So I know that part of my success is the surprise element. And when I read this book, I was surprised by this book. And it inspired me, especially, I just had my first CD out, my debut CD, and it had music from Curacao on it. And this was arranged by Randall Corson. A lot of you know him. He was playing at the Renaissance right now. And then this music was a totally new genre. Nobody knew classical Caribbean music. It didn't exist. And I had my CD out and I won an Edison Award for it because it was something new and something very interesting to listen to. And in the same period, I was reading this book. And this book, I thought, this is an opera. This has to be an opera. And I was so tired, somehow, of trying to explain to people what type of beautiful um, country I live in, what type of gorgeous music we have there, and beautiful people, when I'm abroad singing in France and Italy and Germany. And I didn't even have material. I didn't have nothing to show. 
And when I'm singing an opera, a French opera about the French Revolution, I go into all the books and I go into museums. I want to see all the, the pictures. I want to see what the people were wearing. I want to see what, I want to listen to all the music to know what the French Revolution is about and to know what my person that I'm singing in the opera, what he was feeling. And I would want to know everything about it. But I didn't have that opportunity to feel and go into the culture and go to listen to all the music within my opera, you know, job that I have. I didn't have that with my own culture. I was, try I was going around the world being everything for everybody, but not for my own. And I thought, it has to change. I want to make an opera in Papiamento. I want it to be something that is enriching, rich for our culture. And Rendel, thank God, is my partner in that because he is the musical talent. I'm not the one composing. I call myself glue. I just take the people and stick them to me and they go along with me. You know, I just, I'm glue. And, <laughs> and Rendel, had this enormous task to do the composition and the orchestration of this music. And Karel de Hasset, which is the writer of the book, had the enormous task to make a libretto, which is like the script that we have to sing on. And we worked on it, and it was a long run, and a long run, and a long run. But in May 2013, in Rotterdam, we're gonna have our premiere. But not only that, when I said, we have a Papimento, Papimento opera, and I talked to one of the most, the biggest, the biggest stage directors in opera, which is now doing an opera with Plaza do Domingo at the Metropolitan Opera, and I told him, please read this book six years ago. And he told me, Tanya, if you do something with this book, call me. I did. You shouldn't tell me that, because I'll come look you up. <laughs> I'll come look you up and make you, make you keep that promise. And he's doing it. And from the moment that he said, we're going to do it, somehow everything went into full speed. I have a lot of people here in Curacao, also companies that are supporting this project. I have a lot of people also in Holland that are supporting this project. And what happened, I was also appointed by our queen, Beatrix, and Mark Rutte, our premier in Holland, to be the person that would help organize a big festivity that would be 200 years of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. 200 years. And we are all a part of it. And also, in 2013, will be 150 years. That abolishment of slavery. Yes. And so they thought, what better person can you get? You have female, you have culture, you have Curacao, <laughs> and you only have to, you know, pay her once <laughs> to do the job. <laughs> it's all I want. But, the thing is, to do this opera in Holland takes loads of money. Opera, it is the most expensive art form ever. Because all the art forms come together with, with decor and, and the musicians and the clothes that you're wearing and the wigs, everything comes together and all the organization backstage to make one huge, huge piece of art. And this, I thought, well, I can do it. I can, I can hire people from, uh, from Holland or abroad to do it, and then we'll have a nice little opera, and then people will clap and then give me flowers, fine. But I thought, no, that's not the point of it. The point of it is that I want people from Curacao to be a part of this. Because I was also once a girl, 14 years old, singing on cruise ships with my parents with me because they thought, 
we cannot keep her in the house. She has such a need to be on stage. We have to give her that little that we have here, cruise ships, tourists, um, and, and, and choirs, and, and, and dancing, and acting, everything that was available on the island, my parents supported me 100% to do it. And I think, when I'm here, I feel the talent on the island. So I decided, I have to incorporate all the people from Curacao to also participate in this opera. And then I know you're not all opera singers, some of you are, maybe in your bathroom, but I don't think it's necessary for you to be able to read notes or have a big voice to sing this. Because my dream is to have this book, Katibu Dichong, in this opera and have the voices of all the people that have this blood in them, that are Yudi Corsau, to participate with me in this huge, huge opera. And I want it also, when we produce it in Holland, to come here. And I want to have it. And these are all things, thank you. These are, these are all my dreams. This, I've been dreaming about this for such a long time. And I'm thinking, why dream about it? We've, we've heard all these dream do things, you know? And I was like, yeah, sure, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, it's exactly that. And then I want it, and I, my, my biggest dream is to have it in front of the Gouverneur's Palace on the square. That's the place to be, right? That's the place to be. And, but I need you to come with me and do this. I need you to do this. Because without the support of the people that also think that it's important to not just think, oh my God, the white man with the whip, and then we are the black people, they're slaves. Ah, no, it's not. There are people in the situation that they were in that time that we are not those people anymore. So, and we all know, we all know that it is a very difficult political time now in Curacao. We all have our opinions about it. And first of all, I want to say, I have nothing to do with any political thing in Curacao. This is pure my project. And <laughs> yes, because, because I, I really, really think that it is something that has nothing to do with what is popular to think right now. To be on this island and be on this, such a mixed, colorful bunch of people, I mean, look at you. It, we all have the same heritage, and that is that we are all somehow connected. And in this opera, if you think, wow, I can't sing, but I want to participate, I need people to work backstage. I need people to be um, the, the, the ladies that, have, um, that are giving you the, the booklets. I went to my old high school and I asked them, did you all read this book? And they said yes, because it's on the literature list. And I told them, I want to have just a few sentences of somebody that is 15 years old right now, what they think about this book. And I will publish it in our program book to see that we have all, all the different perspectives of one same thing, that we are all connected. So, if you want to come and participate in this opera, come this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from five to seven at Music Centrum, the CCC in Emmastad, Centro Cultural Corso, I will be there. And you can show me what you got. Thank you.